final or your song three or something else if we negotiate. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about analog and digital audio. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to break it up. I'm just going to start with the analog lecture first, which of course will go longer than I wanted to uh, because there's a fair amount to cover um, and it's all really important for you to know. So when we make a sound, if we go back to our hmm, my pencil, my pen I just had here. If we make a sound, a sound happens in space. Sorry, that's a sound right there. Sure, we'll give it a, a nose and a mouth. Uh, sound happens in space, and we capture it in a microphone. We have called this acoustic energy. Okay. Uh, then we have converted to electric. energy okay and when it's electric it can be one of uh, two things it can uh, be analog or digital when it comes out of the microphone it goes through a thing called a preamp okay a preamp boosts the signal up and then it goes uh, <clears throat> usually into um, a digital to analog converter or analog to digital converter ADC into our computer out of our computer to a digital analog converter, comes out of the digital analog converter, usually goes to an amplifier, and finally to a speaker, and back out to our ears. and becomes acoustic again. Okay. And this is still electric over here. And then down here, uh, that's electric too, but what we'll do is we're going to call this digital. And this is analog over here, and analog over here. So our, sig our sound signal starts out with acoustic energy, ends up uh, as analog electric energy, gets converted to digital energy, back to analog, analog electric, and then back to acoustic again. Does that make sense? Speakers and microphones convert acoustic to electric or vice versa. Analog to digital converters convert analog to digital, digital to analog. Okay, that's what they do. Questions on that? So I'm going to try to take you through this chain today. We're going to start out now first with just this part right here, just the analog part, and then I'm going to add the digital afterwards. Okay, add the digital afterwards. Back in the day, we used to have, not digital here, we would have a mixer and a recorder, a tape, and a mixer. And the analog signal used to go straight across here like this. It never went down to digital. Okay. But now we have this digital path that we need to know and understand. Okay. When we converted acoustic energy to electric energy, uh, this is very low level information. It makes electrical pulses on there. Remember, some of it is generated right by the microphone. And it's on the order of a, a millivolt, which means 0.001 volts. One volts, and this is called mic level. Mic level, the signal is very low. Okay? Let's click on that side. Mic level. We go through a preamp, and what the preamplifier does is it amplifies that signal about a thousand times, and so that it's somewhere around one volt, and we call that line level. This signal right here is at line level. Okay. It becomes digital. It comes out of digital. It's still at line level, and we go up to the power amplifier, and now we amplify it one more time and it becomes, do I have another color here? Yes, I do. Speaker level. Speaker level coming out. Mic level, line level, speaker level.
I'll circle those in yellow. Speaker, line, mic level. These are the three levels of signal that we have. And this is analog signal at this point. Okay? This is a very low level, about one millivolt. This is a, a mid-range level, about one volt. This is eh, 30 to 40 volts, somewhere in that range. If you were to plug <clears throat> uh, line level into mic level, you would blow out the device and ruin it. This is too powerful. Okay? This is powerful enough it can make a speaker move. This is very minuscule, small enough that even a little or tss can make the mic move and register that. Okay? Okay. Mic, line, speaker, level. Questions on those? Does that make sense to everybody? And sorry, I've gotten excited with my colored pens here. Oh, speaker, level. Any questions on those? A preamp amplifies from mic to level, mic to line. A power amp amplifies from line to speaker. Are we happy? OK. <clears throat> well, let's go talk about what carries these different signals, OK? And it's usually it's cables and connectors. Cables and connectors look, work like this. You have a cable that runs like this, and in it go electrons. Little electrons get fed in here and fed out here, or they get fed in here and fed out here. Okay? On the end of the cable is some sort of connector that connects that cable to other devices. First, I'm going to talk about the cables uh, and some of the applications of them, and then if you see down here, I'm going to talk about the connector types. You need to know both. Most of the time when someone talks about a cable, they're talking about the connector type. When they say XLR cable, it usually means the connector that's at the end of that cable. Okay. <clears throat> cables, the, the three primary types of cables that we're going to deal with in audio are two conductor, three conductor, and twisted pair cables. What does that mean? Well, two conductor works like this. It has a positive and a negative or neutral. How does that work? Well, if I send an electron down that positive one, it comes back on the negative. And so it goes back and forth like this. Positive push, negative pull, back and forth. Okay? My positive would be here, my negative would be here. Does that make sense? And that's coming right off the microphone. It's feeding, feeding it down there. This is called a two-conductor cable. It's very simple. It has probably a plastic sheath around it, and then inside it's got Conductor one and conductor two. One's positive, one's negative. You have to have the two conductors. You have to be able to push and pull those electrons back and forth like that. Back and forth like that. Cheap. This can carry a mono signal. Okay, mono signal. One one signal. Every signal has to have a positive, negative. Why? Because if you you have your waveform like this, positive is that way, negative is below. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Questions there. Easy? Okay. Uh, the biggest problem from this happens when you're out in the real world and you have these nasty guys called electrons floating around in the air. Interference or uh, electromagnetic energy that starts to mess with the electrons in those wires. Interference. And what happens is that after a long period of time, the signal in this cable is no good. It uh, has too much interference. The signal to noise ratio drops. The noise gets too loud, and you don't hear the original signal. And electrons tend to get tired. So you run electricity for a long ways. You tend to lose your initial signal. So not only is the noise coming up, the signal is coming down, and eventually you don't have anything. Does that make sense? Okay. How do we prevent that? Well, they found if you took a positive and a negative, and then you wrapped it inside a sheath. And then put it inside the plastic. So I have a positive, a negative, and then this sheath around them. 
And what I've done with that sheath now is grounded it. And a ground looks like that. Okay? This sheath here is attached to the earth. While I send electrons down this one and I get them back on this one, any electron that touches this wire just goes to earth. So if I have interference floating along out here from space and it hits that sheath, the electron just goes brruh, 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 down to earth. It doesn't have any impact on my positive and negative that are already going. It leaves them alone and I have less interference. Then all I have to worry about is the positive and negative dying out over time, but I don't have any interference. This is called a shield. Shielded has three conductors. It has the positive, it has the negative, and it's got the ground around it. One, two, three. It costs more, but it doesn't get interference in it. Question is that? Easy, right? <clears throat> There's one other type of cable that I just started lecturing about today because I realized it's become very important. It's called twisted pair. What does that look like? Well, what you end up is you have a positive and a negative like this, and then another positive, or the positive and negative are twisted like this around each other. And it goes into the cable like this, and you might have quite a few of these. Positive, negative, positive, negative. You can have many pairs of those positive and negative. Twisted pair is extremely good at rejecting interference. If this interference comes, because they're twisted around each other, it can't charge one of them. And it goes away. And so it's very in resistant to interference. Okay. Uh, the problem with twisted pair is there have to be very thin wires to twist around each other. In fact, the tighter you twist them around each other, the more resistant they are to interference. Okay? And uh, so you want a really thin wire. That's not very good for carrying audio. If you want to carry audio down there, you want the fattest wire you can, analog audio. So what these are used for is mainly digital. Okay? And we'll, we'll talk about why they work well for digital. Uh, but more and more of the audio that you guys are starting to use is going to be using twisted pair. Okay. So these are the three kinds. You have a, a two conductor, you have a three conductor, and you, did I spell that wrong? Yes, I did, shielded, and you have twisted pair. Sorry, that didn't work very well. Pair. Two conductor, three conductor, twisted pair. Questions on those before I move to the connectors that we put on the end of them? Good? All right. So again, when most people talk about cables, they're not talking about the cable, they're talking about the connector. And there are, I'm going to come back to this in just a second. There are one, two, three, four, five connectors I want you to know. You should be pretty familiar with them. We can take a look at them right here. XLR connector. XLR connectors look like this. Okay? This is a, uh, a jack and a plug, or male and female. Males have the little pokey things. Females have the little things that pokey things go into, just like animals. right? Uh, and generally, the signal will go from male to female, just like people. That's, that's how I was taught to remember it. And the time someone said that, I now remember that. Right? Uh, XLR has... How many conductors can you see inside there? Three conductors. So what kind of cable would an XLR connector need to be on? Uh, not quite. We'll get to we'll get a three conductor cable. It can be used for stereo, but you'd want to put an XLR on this type of conductor. That make sense? Which I'll leave this page open here. Okay, so this would easily go here. If you connected it to a two conductor cable, one of these isn't being used. Isn't being used. Okay? So there'd be no reason to pay for that XLR. XLR is very expensive but very rugged and durable. Okay? It also has a little clipping thing that allows you to lock things into it. XLR can, cables can be used for mic, line, or speaker level. And they are. Mic, line, or speaker level. We primarily see it in, in, in microphone level, 
but it's also very good for a speaker. Okay, why? Uh, because it resists interference because it's got that shield around it, and you could drive a semi truck over it and it wouldn't break. Okay, and it's got big fat connectors, lots of metal right there. Uh, the next type of connector, quarter inch. Quarter inch. We'll look at this one first. We'll start with that one right there. Okay, that's a quarter inch. Uh, uh, do, can you guys tell me if that's male or female? Good. Well, good. We don't have to do the birds and the bees part. So excellent. Okay, and uh, see if we can find a female version of a quarter inch. Right, something like that. Okay. Uh, again, plug and jack is the other terms you use, but most people use male, female, male, female. Okay. Uh, if we look at this quarter inch right here. Uh, how many uh, conductors does it look like that it has? Two. Two. If you look here, there's the tip and there's the sleeve right here. Let me put it up higher on the screen for you. Tip here, sleeve here. It's a two conductor connector, so what kind of cable would it probably go on? On a two conductor cable. Is it going to get interference on it? Yes. So would you run it for very long distances? No. Would you plug it from your guitar into a guitar amp? Yes. Okay. Some of them have this. Any ideas what that might be up there? Three conductors. Anyone know what those three conductors would be called? This is the tip, this is the sleeve, and this is the ring in between. So we often will call something that looks like this tip, ring, sleeve. Three conductors. Some of you may be used to the term stereo for that, and uh, yes, there's a reason for that. You can actually carry a stereo signal. We'll talk about that in just a second. But for right now, tip ring sleeve, male, quarter inch, and guess how thick it is? About a quarter inch. Very good. Eighth inch are exactly the same. Eighth inch connector, same thing. We can have a uh, tip ring sleeve, which can oft often be used for stereo, or we can have a mono version of 8th inch. We can have male and female. Here's the male connector, here's the female connector. Okay, same thing on 8th inch. Uh, the next one we have uh, is a RCA. You guys seen these before? Just male or female down here? Female. Very good. How many connectors do we think this uh, thing has here? Two connectors. Okay, it's got right here. It's got the little uh, uh, center one, and then it's got the ring on the outside there. You see that? Okay. These are really cheap, easy to make ones. Uh, and if you're just going from your CD player to your stereo, you're only going three feet. It's great. If you're going from me to Preston, not so good. It's going to get interference in it. Also, if you drive a truck over it, it will collapse. <laughs> okay. It's not as robust, but it doesn't cost as much to make. It makes it cheaper. Right? Uh, last pair I want you to know is, uh, or last part is a Cat5 connector. Cat5 connectors look like these right here. Okay, and uh, inside. These little, oh, this zoomed in picture right here. Inside these little teeth are the connectors for each one of these wires. And you see how these conductors are, uh, are these conductors are twisted around each other. There's the white and the blue. That's a positive and negative. And then there's the white and the green. That's a positive and negative. And there's a the white and the red. You can actually carry uh, eight different pairs in there. You see that? I'm sorry, four different pairs of eight, eight wires. Okay, eight wires inside there. Uh, and that's a pretty standardized connector, and it's got the twisted pair. You see, this is how it looks. And you'll see here, you've probably heard of Cat5, Cat5e, and Cat6. Remember how I was saying if you twist it tighter, it rejects interference more? And you'll see that Cat6 is just twisted much tighter. It's got to have a thinner wire in it to twist it that tight. Okay. Uh, so uh, a twisted pair cable with a Cat5 connector on it. Most of us would call it Ethernet. The ether, Ethernet runs on, is a protocol that runs on twisted bear cables with Cat5 connectors.
Ethernet runs on it. Just like audio runs on audio runs on RCA. Or, I'm sorry. It's what I would call this two connector cable with RCA. Two conductor cable with RCA connectors on it can carry audio. Questions? We happy? Okay, applications. Something kind of weird starts to happen here. When we have a mono signal, we only need a positive and a negative. If we run a mono signal down a two conductor cable, it is called unbalanced. If we run a mono signal down a shielded cable where we use the positive and the negative and then the ground outside of it, we call it balanced. Unbalanced. Why do we use the term balanced and unbalanced uh, in audio instead of shielded and unshielded? I don't know. No, I don't know. But balanced and shielded are the same thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, but what the, one of the things they found, because everybody's always looking to save some money, is how can we carry stereo? Right. Most of us listen in stereo. Well, one option would be to have two of these cables with the positive and negative in it. Right? Oops. The positive and the negative. Okay. So I've got cable one, cable two. But that's twice as expensive. What if I could find another way to carry it? Well, they did find another one. They said, hey, instead of using this as a ground on the outside here, let's we can actually share the neutral wire. I won't get into the electronics of that. But what happens in there is you have a positive and a negative for left and a positive and a negative for right. Okay, And we will take the right positive and the left positive and run it into the two wires. And then we'll, we'll put these neutrals or negatives together and we'll tie them to the shield that's around this thing. So this connects to the shield and then the whole thing goes in to the, the whole wire. So we have the neutral surrounding the positive, the, the left and right positives. And it is no longer, it is now unbalanced or not shielded. Because now we're using that, uh, that sheath around it and electrons from the outside can interfere with it and will interfere with it. But we've got a stereo signal coming out of a three conductor wire instead of needing two two conductor wires. We just saved ourselves an extra wire. Does that make sense? Questions on that? Go ahead. Between these two? Yeah, like you can't. They're, they're, I, they are identical. The same wire could do both. It could be a balanced mono or unbalanced stereo. The sa it is the same wire. Okay, so let's go back to our connectors then. Can we connect an RCA cable to a three conductor wire? No, because RCA only has how many conductors in it? Can we connect an RCA cable to a three conductor wire? Yes, and we do. Okay, so RCA, I'm sorry, XLR, did I say RCA? XLR can carry either balanced mono or unbalanced stereo. Does that make sense? There's a left and right. So there's two signal paths. So on a stereo, I have a positive and negative for my right and a positive and a negative for my left. Mono is right or left, or right and left. You have to have this would be called dual mono right here. This would be this cable would be considered you'd have two mono cables, dual mono. Here we would have what we call what Alex was saying earlier, a stereo cable. So I can connect a tip ring sleeve 
to that three conductor cable too, whether it's quarter inch or eighth inch, and it can become a stereo cable, but it's not balanced if I do that. It loses its balancing, it loses its shielding. We see this all the time, don't we? Right here, what is this connector that goes into the computer? What's that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> that would be a, yeah, you're the second person to say that today. So uh, auxiliary would be a use for this. We'll talk about what auxiliary means in, in a few minutes. Okay. But what is the actual jack? Well, it is a jack. So this is an eighth inch. And is it male or female? Male. male. Very good. And uh, is, it, is it balanced or unbalanced? How many conductors are on it? Let's start with that. No. Three, right? It's got the, the tip, the ring, and the sleeve, right? So on this cable, we could carry what kind of signals? There's two different options. Stereo what? Unbalanced or mono, mono balanced or shielded, okay? What's usually carried on these when we hook it onto our headphones? Stereo unbalanced. Stereo mouse. Does that make sense? Okay. And what it does when it goes to our headphones is you, you, it has a Y in it, right? So that the, the I think it's the, the sleeve here that's the shared one, and it, they literally just split the wire, and now it becomes the negative on the left and the negative on the right, and then the positives go left to right, and you have two wires going to your ears. And it comes out of the computers here. Okay. This is better than plugging in, if you didn't do this, you'd have to plug in two of these. For your headphones every single time. This is just cheaper to make and easier and more robust. Yeah, actually, these are pretty, these don't break near as easy. RCAs break pretty easily. They are cheap. They're really cheap. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. I'm going to pause there here while we're going to practice speaking some of these terms.